bring genuine change to this nation. For Goldstein. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, I was actually quite moved yesterday about an article in the Nine Press by its national affairs editor titled Time to End Canberra's Statues of Limitations, particularly talking about the lack of statues of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders and women political figures. In fact, there's more Kelpies now in statues than either of those two significant representative bodies. And Rob Harris, the author, is right. The reality is we expect to see more statues of women and of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. There should be statues to Dorothy Tangany, Enid Lyons and Neville Bonner, amongst others. But there also should be one in honour of the namesake of my electorate, Goldstein, or Vida Goldstein, who stood for the values of freedom, service, justice and respect. She was an incredible Australian. She was the first woman to stand for parliament in the former British Empire. She was a suffragette who inspired others all around the world. She fought for the right of women to be able to vote, to buy a home and to enter marriages on the same terms as men. And when I speak to many people across the country, and sometimes, unfortunately, as you'll know, Deputy Speaker, you have to correct the pronunciation of her name, it's quite clear that there is not a proper acknowledgement of her legacy. In fact, there have recently been books written by Claire Wright and Jacqueline Kent on her important legacy and why it should be honoured. Statues are not the solution to bigger challenges, but it would be good if young women come to Canberra could see uh, leaders.